Hey guys, Down Phoenix here, and I decided to do a little hop on just to talk about the Microsoft E3 press conference. As you can see, I was watching it on the Xbox right there. Yeah. And so, anyways, uh, just want to give some thoughts, you know, as far as the press conference overall. Um, overall, it wasn't too bad. I, it wasn't as bad as last year, let's put it that way. Um, or the year before, you know, whenever they decided to do, oh, let's uh, talk about Connect, you know, Connect, new way to game, you know, God damn. Uh, I, um, I've noticed there's been a severe decline in the quality of Microsoft's offerings uh, since Connect. I mean, not like the core franchises. I mean, like Gears, Halo, and all that good stuff's been pretty good, but. Um, you, what I mean is, like, just the overall lineup of games has been terrible. Uh, but this year, it's a little bit better. Um, you know, the first off, they kicked the stuff right off with uh, Halo 4, which uh, isn't really a big surprise. You know, Halo's one of their biggest franchises, undoubtedly. And uh, the new Halo game looks pretty good, I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm interested. You know, it might give me a reason to possibly renew Xbox Live. We'll see. Uh, but, um, you know, I'm not particularly sure if it's going to. Um, pretty much every other game that they showed off, um, not too excited about as far as exclusives for Microsoft goes. Um, maybe the new Forza game. Uh, they had one Kinect game that didn't look too bad. It was pretty much like a 3D Angry Birds ripoff, Angry Birds, Angry Birds ripoff, and so that one might be all right. You know, I mean, it's kind of like a non-reason to get Connect. Like, I mean, if you really have to have Connect, it might be something fun. But uh, <laughs> you know, there's definitely no reason to run out and get just for that game. I mean, especially when you just play Angry Birds on your tablet or smartphone or whatever, uh, or PS3. Hint, hint. Because Angry Birds on PS3, it's not an Xbox 360. Interesting, very interesting. Uh, but anyways, um, <laughs> uh, then we got a nice uh, surprise reveal for the new Splinter Cell game, Splinter Cell Blacklist, and it looks really good. I'll have to admit, uh, it's kind of the uh, same style as Conviction, uh, but there's definitely more fluid movement to it, um, better shooting mechanics. And uh, the return of Spies and Mercs is coming back. Uh, overall, it looks like a, a big improvement from um, from the last game, Conviction. You know, which that was I liked Conviction a lot, but it looks like that uh, Ubisoft's taking some of the problems with that game and they're rolling with it. Uh, one thing I wasn't too sure about is uh, Sam Fisher did some Assassin's Creed type shit. You know, which. I'm not too sure how I feel about that, but uh, it does lend to the fluidness of the gameplay, at least. So it, it looks pretty interesting. Um, then after that, they kind of started kicking off a bunch of Kinect bullshit, uh, like I was talking about earlier. And uh, so, yeah, not excited about it. But there is a couple of interesting things that I want to talk about, uh, mainly... Um, you know, I noticed that they're doing that new smart glass thing, which um, appears to be kind of something aimed, I guess, to counteract the Wii U uh, with its tablet controller. It's basically going to allow you to use your uh, smartphone or tablet device, um, you know, probably just the major ones like Android and iOS and, of course, Microsoft's offerings, as far as that is concerned, you know, probably not going to see any action on that on my BlackBerry. But uh, I got an Android phone at least, you know, so we'll see how that goes. And you know, by the time they actually start launching that stuff, who knows? Maybe I'll have a iPad or well, probably not. I hate Apple, but <laughs> well, I don't know. I I'm not going to totally rule out an iPad in the under three hundred dollar range. Let's put it that way. Um, it's just overpriced for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, that seemed pretty interesting, you know, with the way it's going to sync up with not just gameplay, but also TV shows and stuff like that. They were talking about how, like, you can watch something like Game of Thrones, and you can use the smart glass to get more information on the show, 
as, as you're watching it, which that's kind of cool feature, you know. I mean, I'm sure we'll probably see something similar that, to that on the Wii U without actually having to own one of those devices, but most people have a smartphone and or a tablet nowadays, so. And, and, and if you don't, you're probably going to have one maybe uh, by the time Smart Glass comes out, so. Uh, and if not, well, I guess you just won't be able to take advantage of it. But at least it's not like Connect, where you have to buy an accessory and take advantage of it. You know, like a particular accessory that you're not going to get much use out of. I mean, at least you get a smartphone or a tablet. You can use it for a lot more than just uh, the the games, you know, or whatever, you know. So, so it's kind of a cool idea. You know, it might might give people another reason to get a such device if they haven't already. Um, but otherwise, all the other stuff they showed was pretty lame. Um, I guess if you're a big sports fan, apparently the ESPN app is going to finally show live video uh, now. Uh, ESPN, which that'd be pretty cool, you know. I mean, I don't have ESPN on my cable package, so and maybe if I'm really in the mood for watching some sports or something, or I want to watch like a baseball game or something like that that they have on there, I mean, that'd be kind of cool. Um... You know, because I, I mean, I have, like, basic cable. It doesn't have ESPN on it. It's got really basic stuff. I mean, it's like half shopping channels, let's put it that way. Um, yeah, I mean, that's all I really got to say about that in particular. Um, there is this new Xbox music service coming out, which um, it pretty much looked like they're rebranding Zoom. They're getting rid of the Zoom name entirely and adding some new functionality with Connect and all that good stuff. We'll see how that goes. They didn't really show much off with that. Um, as far as, like, uh, games go, they showed a couple of teasers for, like, the new Gears of War game, and uh, they showed this game called Loco Cycle, which uh, apparently... No idea what it's about. Apparently it's going to be a racing game, but it's talking about your character knows, like, 50 languages and 40 martial arts styles, so... <laughs> I don't know what that's got to do with racing, but uh, we'll see. Um, the new Tomb Raider, oh my god, that game looks awesome. I mean, I guess, yeah, it probably is kind of a ripoff of Uncharted or whatever, but it's definitely more gritty, more dark, uh, more personal feeling than Uncharted. Uncharted was kind of like a spoof of, like, an uh, Indiana Jones movie or something. It's totally an Indiana Jones kind of game. Uh, Tomb Raider looks like it's definitely going to delve more uh, serious and more movie-like as far as that goes. Um, but, yeah, I'm uh, really looking forward to that one. That was probably the most impressive game that they showed off, and that's actually how I felt about last year's E3, so that uh, really speaks to the quality of what uh, Square Enix and, and the old Eidos crew at Crystal Dynamics is showing off. You know, they're a top-notch studio, I've got to admit. Um... And then uh, the new South Park game, oh great, that looks that looks pretty awesome. It looks exactly like the TV show, which is amazing, because uh, they've never been able to do, pull that off before in a video game. I mean, they've gotten fairly close with the last couple of South Park games, but, you know, they're obviously video game sprites, you know. I mean, this one really looks like it ups the ante in the visuals department, Um not really much as far as gameplay, but just the fact that there's a new South Park game coming out with uh, actual writing and humor by uh, Matt and Trey is going to be in it. Um, the actual voice acting, um, you know, all that good stuff really is going to tie in. And uh, it makes it a must-own for uh, for uh, South Park fans, you know. So I'm definitely going to get that one. And it comes out two days before my birthday. Uh, that's pretty crazy. Um, kind of a crazy way. I was kind of hoping for maybe a holiday release, but uh, you know, whatever it takes to make it as good as possible. Um, so hopefully the uh, crew at Obsidian doesn't let us down because uh, I'm really looking forward to that one. Um, so overall, the most impressive games for me was Tomb Raider, then South Park, then Halo 4, and then uh, Splinter Cell in those orders. Um, not, not much else really interested me. I mean, yeah, the new Black Ops game didn't look too bad. I mean, it, it is what it is, you know. Activision really has this marketing thing down. And they, there's, I noticed there's kind of like a cycle with Call of Duty games, you know. And that applies not just to me, but practically everybody that plays Call of Duty. Um, you know, 
they show off their stuff in June, everybody gets super excited for the next game. Interest in the series in general goes up at that time. Then, of course, November comes around. They break sales records. Everybody in the world buys the game. You find your grandparents playing the game. <laughs> okay, maybe not that drastic. Maybe for a few people. But um, And then, of course, uh, December comes around. Everybody swears it's still the best game ever. You know, best Call of Duty game ever. And then, of course, January rolls around. People start bitching about the imbalanced gameplay and the crappy maps and the camping and all that good stuff. And, of course, by the time February, March rolls around, interest really dives down because technical issues like lag and all that good stuff come up and, and people get pissed off. Um, you know, of course, even though everybody's looking through, it a rose, the, through the rose-colored glasses the first uh, couple months, you know. Um, so, and then, of course, you know, you notice the game starts showing up a lot on the game's uh, GameStop shelves and people bitching about it, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter at this point because they've already sold 15 million copies. So Activision's already already won your money, you know. So what's the point of bitching? Uh, of course, the cycle just continues. Um, basically, everybody that has bitched about uh, Call of Duty in the past is going to buy the new game. Uh, me, <laughs> I'm going to do my best to keep under control and not buy it, but I'm not going to lie. It's probably going to happen uh, because Activision is really good at what they do. And so, you know, I'm going to do my best not to, though. Um, you know, I'm going to look at other games coming out this year, of course. Unfortunately, we didn't see anything about, uh, like, Assassin's Creed or anything like that. Uh, kind of disappointing, but... Uh, you know, I guess they can't show up everything. Maybe we'll see something at Sony's conference. Um, or a new Hitman game. We didn't see that either. Um, didn't really see any RPG stuff. Um, the only RPG is the South Park game. And like like I said, uh, it really showed off the graphics of the game. It didn't show off anything else, though, really. I mean, it was just a two-man trailer. But, um, yeah, that was pretty much it for Microsoft conference. Overall, 6 out of 10. You know, it was a pretty good show as far as uh, the Connect, dragging it down, the Usher performance, which Usher really sucked there. Um, you know, I mean, some people were like, oh, it's live performance, blah, blah, blah. Well, did you watch his Grammy performance like a month or two back or whatever it was? It was a lot better. So, um, this was pretty poorly put together in comparison. Um, I'm not an Usher fan anyways, like, I don't really care, you know, I'm, I'm I can tell when it's good or not, though, because I, I'm big in the music, so, uh, but, yeah, I mean, there, it just wasn't that interesting, you know, I, I live blogged a lot of it on Twitter, in case you didn't notice, uh, and <laughs> I encountered some technical issues in the process, uh, oh, uh, Resident Evil 6 looks pretty good, I'm kind of torn, though, because, uh, there was a couple of sequences they showed up that looked really cheesy or bad, you know, I mean, but, uh, some of it looked really good, I'm probably gonna get it, we'll see, I don't know, uh, haven't really decided on that yet, uh, but yeah, that's all I gotta say about this particular, uh, E3 conference from Microsoft, uh, you know, I'll probably do a Sony video tomorrow, I mean, the conference is tonight, but, uh, I'm not gonna really have time to do a video, so I'll do that, and if I have the time, I'll also do the Nintendo video, too, um, their conference is tomorrow. So, uh, with that, guys, Dow Phoenix out.